I just thought it was a really cute house, and I knew that I was the one that was for me and my son. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. I did not get a home inspection. The house looked perfect. What a mess. We're going to do a lot of damage here, aren't oh, we? Oh, yeah. Boom. Your heart stops. You just don't do these things. You can blow the house up. Spend our money right, we don't lose. Spend our money wrong, that could cost you. Virginia was looking for a house for her and her son. And actually, you know what? She found a nice little home, uh, just perfect. Virginia didn't get a home inspection. Problem arised as soon as she moved in. If you're not going to get a home inspector to give you the right opinion, then you're going to be based on your own opinion. And is that the right one? When I was looking for a house, I probably looked at about maybe 15, 16, because I had to stay within a certain price range, and they all looked basically about the same. They were all bungalows. They all needed updates. And so when I saw this house, I had never been in a one and a half story before. And I was surprised when I opened the door. I can see the kitchen. I can see it was updated. It had the backyard. And uh, the two bedrooms are quite large, actually. I just thought it was a really cute house, and I knew that I was the one that was for me and my son. So, um, yeah, I knew the search was over. Luca and I, my son, we are close. It'll be for him, really, because the house was bought with him in mind. With regards to the inspection, you know, my mortgage, it, it was maxed out already to the limit, and um, I had asked the agent, um, do I need an inspection? And he had said, you know, when you take a look around the place, everything looks new. If it was a house where you can see it's not new and things needed to be done, then, you know, for sure you would need an inspection. So then I thought, well, you know, it looks good. I'll, I'll forego it. You must be Virginia. Hi, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How are you? Nice little house. So you bought a home and you didn't get a home inspection. No, I didn't. Do you, how do you feel about that now? I regret it. I regret it. The first thing uh, I, that actually went wrong was before we even moved into the house. I realized that there was some sort of insect or flea problem or something because my son's wearing these socks and you saw all this black stuff on it, like, like insects. And my legs were always so itchy and scratchy. It was getting like as if you had mosquito bites. And it turned out that, I guess because there were cats here before and, they had, and there was a dog, I guess at one point, I guess some sort of um, fleas. I had to get an exterminator to come out, and the carpet had to be removed in the basement. What are you doing? I was already working six days a week just to basically, you know, keep up, which is why the basement was never done, because I didn't have the money to do it at that point. I didn't even want to move in anymore. I thought, I just want to sell, because who knows if it's going to come back, you have your furniture in. You know, I had never come across this problem before. All right, it appears we have a new kitchen. Out a door, we're supposed to have a register here. There is no heat register at all in the kitchen. The kitchen, I'd go down there first thing in the morning, it's cold, I would actually turn on the furnace, but there's no air duct in there for the heat to actually even heat the kitchen. So basically what I would do is turn on the oven, so it eventually would heat up so that you get some heat in there. No, I'm just gonna assume, because there has been many changes within the home, that whoever tiled the floor tiled directly over top of the register. And that's just a guess at this point, and I'll find out. I'm using this tool just to verify whether or not we have duct work in the floor in the kitchen. So I would see an even temperature in the floor, and it shows nothing. It's even picking up my footprints. Look at the footprints in the floor, me walking, my heat transferring from my own boots into the floor, but not showing anything to do with a duct line in the floor or a register. So if we look at the corner, the, see the bottom of the cabinet here? It is definitely a cool breeze at the bottom of this cabinet. It is. Got to ask yourself why. Why isn't there? We need heat in here, don't you think so? It's plumbing, it's kitchen. We want our feet warm as towels on the floor, but no heat. Hmm. Kind of foolish. So you feel good. You buy a house, you come in, you see that it's got a fairly nice little tight kitchen, but new cabinets, and they brag about it. Um, there was no hood. No hood. Was that duck line there? 
no I had to have it uh, put in because it was impossible you're cooking you're frying smoke everywhere and you know there's pros here okay we have a gas stove mm -hmm. you have nice clearance mm -hmm. for your hood here so this is proper whoever did this did this correctly I really don't want to see a flex line that comes from your uh, rain shed I'd rather see a fixed pipe problem with uh, anything to do with a flex is it constricts airflow and it's nothing really in code that says you can't do it it's just not the way to do it I started getting concerned when there was a problem with the plumbing. It started with the sink in, in the bathroom where the water slowly would take a few minutes to, go, to drain away, then it would take hours, then overnight, then it would stay on for days. Your water sitting at the yeah, bottom here. It's, it's been an issue. It's been an issue? It's gone lower because it was about in a few inches last night. My son took a shower, I took a shower. When? This morning? Last night. Last night? Last night. Uh, so this water's been sitting there yes. since last it's, night? But it's, it's going slowly, so. By tonight, it should be your midday, it should be gone. They built up the floor and turned it into a shower. So that means at one time, this was properly plumbed. We did have air behind the water. If we look in the backyard and look up, we're gonna see the stack vent is in this wall. One, this could be the contractor who did the work, did all the plumbing wrong, and I'm talking about the drainage. Two, we could have a major blockage within the system. Now, it's an older bathroom that has somewhat of a facelift. So I don't know what they've done, but I'm gonna find out what they've done. I don't need to even take you through the house anymore. I'm gonna go through the house now. And I'm telling you, we're gonna open up a few things. We're probably gonna do a little bit of damage. Then I'm gonna bring you back, and I'm gonna point out everything I found and give you an idea of what it's gonna cost to fix everything, just to let you know maybe why you should've got a proper home inspection. When you're looking for a house, you don't think of safety. You think that's that's a foregone conclusion. You just don't do these things. It can blow the house up. I did not get a home inspection. The house looked perfect, so I wasn't expecting these issues to crop up. And so this water's been sitting there yes. since last night? Wow, I tell you, you are a dream to the real estate agent. One of the most important tools that we can have is the camera. This is very simple because whatever I see, I'm gonna take a picture of and now create a documented report that you, the homeowner, now have. It can see what I see. Well, whoever put in the dishwasher doesn't know how to install a dishwasher. Do not tie the drain hose directly into the pipe. It must be tied before the trap. So before the trap is on this side, usually we do it in between the two sink taps. It's a double sink. So we'd have a TY here, put it right into the TY, that way it's directly before the trap. It's just not right. So here's the center of water right here. Let's look at this being water full. Where's this receptacle? This receptacle is within three feet of the sink. If you're going to put a receptacle so close to water, let's make sure it's GFI protected. And GFIs is a ground fault interrupter, and then that's just a receptacle. That means if you're going to be within three feet of water, you must have a GFI. It's wired properly. Now I'm hitting the release for a GFI, so it tells me there's not even a GFI breaker. Cute little cat doors all the way throughout the house. I mean, somebody really loved their cats, and there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's fabulous. Somebody's put in a new panel. Improper clips, too much loose wiring around the panel. Sloppy, sloppy, sloppy. More electrical. Why a junction point right there? Man, that's very dangerous. See how the lines are around this box here? This is not how we do it. They're being properly tied in. If these just rub up against the side, short it right out. Look at this one electrical point. One, too many wires in the box. Two, it's so tight with no plate. It's an electrical hazard. Now, they've done work everywhere else. Imagine where it is. You know, I move a couple of tiles, I find boxes, I'm, I'm looking around, I'm seeing it everywhere. This is a no-no. And there's a, a, a junction point here, 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 here. And they're all so close together. When you're doing electrical, clean up the wires that don't need to be there. Don't turn it into a spaghetti factory. Clean it up, bring it to one point. Who the hell runs a copper line with solder joints for a gas line? I don't know anyone who does this. This is incorrect. We need to look at this closely, how the metal comes up and touches galvanized. Copper and galvanized, or copper and steel, they don't get along. The metals will actually create a corrosion within the pipe, especially the copper. Now, the one you don't want a corrosion in is this, this copper because it is gas. You just don't do these things. You can blow the house up. 
Now that there's no carpet on the floor, you know, I get to see what they've done. And we can see on the floor that they've broken the floor right to the front of the house, directly through to where the new tub is, even to the point where the floor is broken right here, and that's where the drain is going to be to the tub. Big thing that I don't like is the electrical right at the tub. That's a big freaking no-no. There's no electrical permit, so you don't know whether or not it's safe to play with. So does it mean it was done right? Well, maybe. But when we see the electrical that's incorrect, who the hell says this is done right? No air behind water. Oh, look, there's a clean out on the trap. I've said this a million times. If you're going to buy an old home, get a proper home inspection and bring in someone that can scope the drains. Don't finish the basement. Don't do anything till you know. It's only going to take them an hour to scope the drains. Good advice for 250 bucks, I think. Great size backyard for the sun, that's for sure. The house is in pretty good shape. It's amazing what people can do to contaminate it. Just amazing. Hey, Mike. Mr. Bennett. So, you know what that is? That is a inside vacuum plug-in. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was good for pulling up the car in the winter oh, to vacuum okay. out your car to pull the cool air inside the house. Let's yep. eliminate that. Absolutely. OK, there's a lot more I'm going to show you. Come on. Virginia lives here. Yep. And uh, nice lady. Uh, she looks over her son. I guess you noticed right away. Yeah, there's no railing. Well, there's well, no there's a wall. Rail. It's or... just on the wrong side. So we're going to need to bring in a rail guy and see what we can do here. Let's go upstairs first, and then we'll finish downstairs. OK. Now, we need to find an area to get up into the attic. What's that closet like? We may be able to come in at this point here, so remove the light. OK. Check insulation, obviously, uh, up check there. Check insulation, check ventilation, yep. check for mold, check for critters, check, check, check. In the kids' room, a uh, great little room. Not proper registers underneath the windows, but yep. we have the heat register in the interior wall. Strange, OK. So I see signs of condensation. See the dripping on the edge there? Yeah. You can see yep. it from here. OK, yep. now that's just telling me we're having a surface issue, and that's hot meeting cold. Uh, why is that? Is there hot air in the attic? And I really, really, I'm wondering. You know, and it's just, it's blowing down. It's, and yep. what it's doing is creating hot meeting cold, and it's creating Where's condensation. Where's the air returns? Good question. OK, so there's no air returns. That's and another I haven't reason. found any yet. It might make it Probably a little easier. Probably help make the air move throughout the house. Yeah which brings us right to the basement. Okay. We have a lot of vents throughout the whole house that are, appear to be chase runs, et cetera. There's nothing that this is working. It's not a return error. Let's, let's talk to Gary and see Check what we out. do have in here. OK. Hi. Can we uh, repaint in here, please? I think she'd like that. Now, it's probably not a bad idea to pull the ceiling down here. This is going to serve for a couple of things. It'll help us reroute electrical. It'll help us investigate why there's no register in the kitchen, how we can put in a new register in the kitchen. Let's pull down all the suspended ceiling. I know we have all kinds of electrical issues, all kinds. Any questions? No, I got to read my uh, homework for the night. So I'll get the guys in as fast as I can here, and we'll just get it started. And we'll do so much. We'll bring the homeowner back in, show her what we found, and then go crazy and fix it. The truth is, we don't want to take the house down. We're just going to come close to it. OK, so guys, let's get some blue skin on all the tiles, OK? <laughs> We're going to be everywhere in this house. We have HVAC, plumbing, electrical all happening, OK? So they're doing a full test and troubleshoot on the whole house at this point. That's it, Joe. Joey? Hey, Mo. There you are, by the panel, I bet, right? That's where I always find you. How you doing, man? How are you? Good. So you're already getting into it, eh? Yes, I am. So you're going to find all kinds of things throughout this house, and that's what we're afraid of. We think the electrical issue might be a little bigger than what we see on the surface here. OK. Definitely take a look at it. Let me know what's going on. I'm going to be dropping the ceilings in the downstairs basement here for you. Here's one problem right away. One, two, three, four five wires in this box. This box, you really take no more than four wires. I'm sure even if you move some of this installation, you'll find more. I don't think it's a venting issue at this point. No, uh, to me, just um, I took a quick look uh, at all the fixtures in the bathroom here, and I've got a toilet that runs properly. I have a sink that runs uh, fairly well. 
This was not a clogging issue. This was not a venting problem. It was just literally a minor adjustment that had to be done. Uh, what I've done is I fixed the, uh, uh, the pop-up assembly just to create a bit more space. So this, uh, this area is solved. This is the only problem to me. It's just a maintenance that has been uh, neglected over the years. And it's just caused literally by uh, hair buildup, so buildup. Oh, that's a nasty surprise. This is what I, this is what I actually anticipated. Uh, it's typical for, uh, for shower drains. I just realized they had pets here before. There's damage all throughout the house. Then uh, that can't be from one person. Ugh, you gross. And the residual water, of water that was sitting on the floor here, it all drained out. So as, as soon as you pulled that out. As soon as I pulled that out. I'll still test it with water, but I'm confident that this will solve the problem. She'll be now. happy about that. A little gross, but you <laughs> fixed it. Thank you. It's solved. First issue I see right off the bat. And this is a big recipe for disaster. This is a return air for our furnace. Basically, we have air that gets delivered back to our furnace from the whole house. We have a gas line in the return. If this ever leaks for whatever reason, you got natural gas going back to your furnace through your return air. This is a big hazard. This can blow your house up. No heating room in the kitchen. Uh, basically, our best location would be beside our window or our door. These are our cold spots. So in this kitchen is going to be installing heating run. I want somebody cutting around the room, OK? Yeah. Really, what we're looking for is heating runs upstairs into the kitchen. We know they had to be there at some point. I need to heat that room some way. And the fastest way to get there is right through here. Where does that water line go to? It's feeding the fridge, but where's it coming from? OK, well, there's where the heat register was. There's no heat line coming to this and feeding that kitchen, so we've eliminated that possibility anyway. We can see where it was. So at this point, talking to Gary, finding out where we can run one, where we can get it, and we'll go from there. But definitely, I never would have turned a heat run into a water line. Basically, what we're doing is this used to be our old heating vent for our room. So what we've done is we've disconnected it, and we're now going to turn this into our return air. Wayne, you see it? Yeah, I can just see it. All right, just mark return air number two on it. And we're going to put in new heating runs underneath the windows. I find this a lot in a lot of older homes. They don't put return airs on the, on the second floors. So they have a lot of warm air dumping into it, just not recirculating. OK, we do not have an attic access in this whole house. And we have a nice big closet. So come in the closet with me, my friend. I actually want you to start busting a hole in here. And unfortunately, you're going to make the hole, but I got to go through it. MJ. Yes, sir. Come on down. I want to take a peek up there. Well, I definitely think there's enough insulation in the attic, but the air is a little stale up here, so I want to get better contracting in and check the venting. So what we're doing here is we're removing the existing vents. We're installing a, a little better performing product. This particular vent here, a uh, little more uh, critter resistant. It's fully encaged. We're, we'll work in this situation a little better. Damon's been inside and actually opened an attic access for this lower portion of the roof so we can see what we're, we're dealing with. Well, traditionally on most roofs, we have roof vents towards the top of the roof. Uh, what we've actually got here is two separate attics, a lower attic and an upper attic that's separated uh, by a cathedral ceiling. We've got uh, gable vents acting as intakes for that upper attic, and the really bird working as the exhaust. So what we have to do is we have to open up soffit intake underneath here that will allow to vent into this lower attic and exhaust through these two roof vents. Initially, in the upper attic, we thought that the uh, whirly bird may need replacing. It's actually in good functioning form. The, uh, the bearings aren't squeaking. It's, it's uh, spinning well, so it's, uh, it's, it's in good working condition, good working order. Damon! If you look inside this box here, there's no way is the work of a professional. 
It's disgusting. Just disgusting. Oh my God, what a mess. It's a big mess. You look here, here's a wire that's not marretted. What a Another mess. wire that's not marretted. Another wire, what they thought maybe tape would uh, be fine, is not marretted. This, this is a disaster. That's a little dangerous too, isn't it? We have uh, a 40 amp breaker that's for the stove. Yeah. It's on, wire's coming out of it. So I'm tracing it in the basement. Yeah. I, and I lose it in the part of the ceiling that's finished. It ends up here? I don't know, because if you look behind the stove, I don't have a plug. We have a plug right there. That's a 120 line. Oh. So we're talking about. You have a stove plug coming up. I got a 240 line, and I don't know where their other end is going. Oh, so right that's now, a big deal. Right now, I've turned it off. Oh, and by the way, that extra wire yeah. up top, the wire is coming through the yeah. wall. That, go, that jumps off to the plug. So they've taken electrical off of that box, brought it through the easy way and down there. Well, that's why that's supposed to be for a light over the sink. So when you turn on your uh, your light, yeah. that's how it powers up that receptacle. I recommend yeah. a rewire. Well, you got ungrounded upstairs. Yeah. You got ungrounded on this floor. You got this electrical nightmare here in the kitchen. Okay. That is a huge job right there. Yeah. We're talking about And uh, I did find overloaded circuits in the house. I do have one circuit that's got 30 items on it, by the way. So it doesn't end there? Oh, no. Okay, let me talk to Mike and I'll get back to you, buddy. Okay. We're doing a rewire, unfortunately. The whole house. Yeah, Why? there's a lot of ungrounded lines. Also, they hit off one breaker, half the house goes dead. Here's the problem. She didn't get a home inspector. This is what I'm talking about, because now that's an eight to $12,000 fix, just for electrical, and that's not repairs. Right. All right, so we're gonna do it now. It has been renovated and it has been Absolutely. messed with. Yeah. And this is gonna cost an awful lot of money. Maybe she should have got a home inspector. And the right home inspector. Good job, buddy. Thank you. Virginia. Good morning. Nice to see you again. Nice see you again. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Good to see you. Nice to see you. I'll, I'll make this day maybe a little worse than it is outside, but then I'm going to make it a much brighter by the end of it, OK? Come on inside. Thank you. Well, we have cleaned up your house. I mean, what we try to do is protect the house and lay down. We don't want to damage anything. Uh, damage anything. We're going to damage a lot, actually. <laughs> Let me explain a few things. It probably would have been better if you got a home inspector to tell you some of the things that we saw. Let's see, you need to really rerun all the ductwork in your house, and that means we're going to rerun all the ductwork in the house. Electrical, complete rewire of electrical. Throughout the years in this house, somebody's done a lot of renovations and had messed with the electrical. Uh, we have a lot on too many circuits, so too, too much overload on one circuit. And a lot of circuits that actually even Joe turned off one on the panel and turned off almost half the house, which is not good. You got a pretty big panel there. Uh, a lot of ungrounded outlets, correct? That's right. And a lot of hidden junction points. Whoever did the work in here didn't do it with permits, didn't do it properly. It was an eye-opener. I didn't realize all these other electrical issues. I mean, I looked around and I saw all these panels, these, you know, a lot of outlets, but I didn't realize behind all the stuff that he saw. I really, truly thought that this was one house. He wasn't going to find anything more than what I told him. The problem with you being here is pulling down this ceiling and the ceiling in your kitchen, the ceiling in that room, and really doing a lot of exploratory work downstairs, running all new electrical, is that it's going to make your world just a little bit upside down. You're going to be breathing in all the crap, and it's better to get you out of the house for safety, OK? Let's start downstairs. So we're now up in the area of so far, and I haven't told you everything. Oh, yeah, I mean, 60 grand. Uh, yeah, easy. I'm so grateful that um, his whole team is in here getting this house because the amount of money that it would have cost me is just, uh, I would never have been able to have done it. If you're in the tub and it's full of water and you can get up and you can flick your timer switch, but you're standing in water, you are 100% grounded. And if for any reason this is not wired properly, boom, your heart stops. There is no stop in that. We have rules when it comes to electrical. We have rules when it comes to gas that the copper cannot meet other metals because simply it will corrode it. And running that gas fume, that natural gas, through the ductwork, bringing it back to the furnace, brings it right to the flame. And what can happen when gas hits flame? Explosion. Yeah. That's your house, not yeah. mine. I don't want your house to explode, so we're going to fix it, OK? Let's go upstairs, and I'm going to explain the condensation on your walls. I haven't even put up any photographs because there's a concern about if there's water getting through, I don't want the photographs to damage. So that's why the walls are blank. And I really hate that after you know, moving in here that I can't put up photographs. 
Okay, I can actually explain in your son's room. Did you have any condensation at all here? Yes, around that wall. You did? Exactly. Okay. Here's what's happening. This is supposed to be a cold zone, right? Because it is an attic zone. Any attic zone must be cold. This wall is not insulated. Heat's driving through it, meeting the cold, and it's creating That's condensation why. on the wall. I couldn't figure Hot it out is meeting here cold. and my son's room exactly the same same part where the ceiling and the wall. Because they exactly. insulated it incorrectly. You just keep smiling. Thank you, Mike. We're gonna make it right. He's gonna do most of the work. He's gonna make sure everyone. He's gonna. <laughs> Little trickle down. Yes. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we'll bring you back and we'll uh, get you back home again. Okay. I appreciate it. Appreciate I'm happy. It. I had one person tell me, you should sell your house. You should sell your house with all this plumbing in the water. And I go, you know, why should I sell that house? But now I'm glad that uh, the problems are going to be fixed, and I really won't have to sell my house. Tell them with that real quick, guys, and we'll get into it. Did you cut the perimeter of the ceiling already, MJ? Yes, sir. Sweet. Say goodbye to the stucco. We drop the ceiling for two main purposes to run new pot lights and to get Gary's ductwork tied up to the ceiling as much as possible. It's a little bit more work, but at the end of the day, you're helping trades out. You're actually expediating the job a little bit, getting it going. Our demo day is not really over, OK? Gary needs this removed right here. And I'm pretty sure, oh yeah, he already wrote on it, remove. Okay, I give up. You tear it off. Let's see. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that! Come on! Basically, this heating run is going to be running along the ceiling here. So, you know, finished look here is going to be a bulkhead all the way down to hide our heating run. The Joyce's, you know, they're not cooperating. They're just going in different directions. So, we got no choice. We got to go under the under the ceiling. That's the railing system, is it? Correct. Maple rail, paint grade, either way. Just making it safe for them. She has a little boy, right? And okay. it was not right the way it was. We didn't want him falling over the edge. I'll unload here and get set up, and then uh, we'll get started. I'll see you in there. OK, thanks. thanks. This is maple, and the pickets are paint grade. So they, they might either stain it, or they might paint it. They have a choice. Instead of making holes everywhere, we're pulling the wires up through this cavity with a fish stick, and now he's going to actually send it over to our next receptacle. OK, I got enough. Uh, right now, I'm disconnecting the old gas line. The old gas line was a big problem. Um, one, the fittings they've used to connect it, big issues. You're not allowed to use these type of fittings. Two, they used copper plumbing lines and soldered the gas lines together. They have this gas line running through a return air. Big, big issue. We already have signs of it wearing. That's a big hazard, potential for an explosion. So we're cutting the old line out. We're going to run our new one. The old copper line um, had, was touching the steel. The two metals together is corrosive. This is completely shielded. It has a shielding on it. It's aluminum, you know, it's a double thick casing, and it's safe. Oh, you're putting in the last one. Last one, Damon. Very nice. It looks really good, man. Thank nice you. Nice job. Happy with it? I am very. You're not going to get it any stronger than that, man. You know, he's going to be testing this thing out. Oh, I'm sure. Time. All boys will. Very nice job, man. Thank you very much. Guys. So what about the uh, the time command and the switch uh, behind the, we're eliminating those, right? No, those are staying. They are GFI protected back at the panel. Oh, they are? Yeah, it looks like whoever did this kind of knew what they were doing. Bit of a noisy day today. We got the generators running like crazy. Joey is doing a panel swap today, which means all the power in the house is gone. Hard to work, but necessary. 
Better Contracting is here today doing all the eaves troughs and fascia and downspouts today. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> he's not dropping stuff off the roof on me. He's spilling stuff all over me. I have to rip this awning off. Now, some people like them for the kitsch factor. It's a reflection of a different time. It's just, it's not properly functioning. It's rusting. It's actually driving water right onto the front of the deck. Looks way better. Basically, this is an older home, as we know. Uh, the eaves have been replaced at some point on this, but uh, they are old as well. They've also been installed with uh, nails. Uh, the new troughs will actually fasten them with an internal bracket and a screw, which uh, don't expand and contract. These e existing eaves weren't maintained very well either, so we're going to install the smart screen, keeping all the debris from these mature trees out of the gutters and helping with snow and ice. The only wiring that I've left from the existing wiring is basically three lines. If I can't see it, if I can't follow it from point A to point B, I replace the line because I just don't trust it. The way I treat it is, this is my home until I'm done. So if I don't trust it in my house, I'm not going to trust it here. We're cutting the, our opening for our return that's on our main floor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be using this thermal pan and what it's gonna do is it'll be fitting in this joist and that acts as a ductwork for our return air. We cut an opening on the bottom. That way we cut it from the inside and then we just patch the bottom. Seal it all up and it doesn't leak. Today we're gonna be revamping the central vac. Basically, everything has to come out of here. Everything should be glued. Everything should be airtight. And as it is now, it's not. Oh, yeah. Jesus. What we found inside this tubing is basically hair, string, uh, lint, and everything was started by something as simple as a bobby pin. When pipes are installed properly, they're cut at a 90 degree angle. The transition from fitting to pipe is perfectly smooth. So what we're going to do in this home is make sure all the pipes are cut properly, the ones that aren't be removed, and new piping installed. We're now going to install a HEPA filter because this machine is no longer vented to the outside. Anything that may get past the filter, which really doesn't, um, will be trapped inside the HEPA filter. In other words, nothing's getting into the home. First problem that I see, and it's a major problem, is uh, kitchen sink drain is all hooked up and set up properly, but this dishwasher drain, well, not only that it came out uh, freely, but um, it's connected directly to the drain. It allows the sewer gases to actually go directly into the, uh, uh, the dishwasher. Oh, does oh. that ever smell? Ooh. Yeah. Is that just dirty dishes over years of washing, or no. is that actually the methane gas coming back? That's in? actually a sewer gas. Oh, my this, God. This was directly connected to your sanitar line, uh, so you had no barrier, no no trap, no nothing that could stop the gases from coming in. So, so everything that was coming from, from the city sewer was literally coming into this that dishwasher. That is disgusting. So every time they washed their dishes and ate off those plates, they were contaminated. They were they were exposed to methane gases and sewer gases that were literally coming into this dishwasher because it was directly connected. There we go. Oh! <laughs> okay, this is turning out to be fun. You'll be on that side. <laughs> I'll, I'll grab the clean side. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Well, we're providing a new dishwasher. I'm actually connecting it on the upstream side of the trap. Um, the trap serves as a barrier uh, to prevent from sewer gases entering the house as well as the dishwasher. So uh, by hooking it up in the right place, I'm actually stopping any sewer gases from coming into the house. This is the heating room that goes upstairs to the bedroom upstairs. Uh, we already had cut our one in for the floor, um, so once I connect all the ducts, we'll have heating in the kitchen, we'll have heating in the uh, kid's bedroom. She'll be happy, she'll be comfortable. 
this is my material to finish this job. Got to get the drywall on the ceiling today. Uh, we have to start mudding today. We have to do bulkheads today. The list is long. Very nice. You feel the house coming alive? Beautiful. Here, I see no lights coming on. No, alive. let's try the switch. Let's hit the switch. How's that? Very Look cool. at that! Congratulations, boys. Got a rewired house. Thank you very much. I'm gonna go let everyone know. They wanna stop that generator. It's driving everyone nuts. Thanks, buddy. No problem. Wait, you hear that? I hear the birds, finally. Birds. What are you up to, buddy? I'm uh, making baseboard right now. You're making baseboard. Very yeah. tricky. Let me see what you're doing. Right. I started off, I just uh, ripped down an eighth, like this bevel here. OK. So I ripped that down an eighth. Now I got to cut my angle like this. So I'm just going to use this as my template. You are actually making baseboard. Look at you turning into a carpenter. I love it. Nice job, buddy. Thanks, bud. Well, this old paint job sure seen some years. So when we uh, took down the awning, we have a bit of a bare spot there. So I have to paint the whole thing today. I'm just helping Craig out a little bit today, prepping it up for him in advance for him painting out here. It looks like there might be a bit of rain coming. So what I'm going to do is not typical. We're going to spray outdoors. I'm going to use a fine finish sprayer to do this. We're covering cars, neighboring cars. So. Uh, and just in case there's a threat of overspray. But uh, I'm just gonna spray this. It's gonna be much quicker for us. We can get it done. It'll have dry time in case it rains. It's not typical, but you know, I've had enough experience with a sprayer. I'm comfortable doing it. See you, bud. You too. So I understand there's a little boy that lives here. So I've decided to go with a thicker under pad so he can play around, wrestle, play hockey, trucks, whatever. So we decided with the 10 mil pad, and that's also made from a recycled product. They should have a great time down here, and I know they're gonna get a lot of use out of it. It's a big improvement. Right now we're basically on the finishing stages, meaning uh, we're installing all the Switches, lighting fixtures, uh, poly trims, and we're done. Look at this, nice and clean, right? Eh? Isn't it? Nice and clean. Very clean, very crisp, new paint. All right, how are we looking in here? Really good. So how did we solve the issue on the outside wall? We've insulated this whole void okay. with spray foam, wall tight eco. So we have spray foam on all outside walls now. This looks really good, I'm telling you, nice and clean. I'm sure that she's gonna love this. As a matter of fact, uh, let's get her and bring her in. All right. And we'll go over everything. All right. All right, good job, pal. Thanks, buddy. Tell everyone else I said a good job. There she is. Virginia. Long time no see. Wasn't that long, eh? Well. Nice to see you again. I almost, Virginia. Forgot, almost forgot how to get here. <laughs> Steve, well, let me show you what we did in six weeks. Uh, brought in Steve Graves and his, uh, all his workers, and you have new East Ross. We had to make sure that we have proper ventilation. You see the little round discs that are in there? Mm -hmm. That's now properly venting the underneath. And the two vents, he did replace them, and he put in critter resistance because uh, they're the better <laughs> ones. Is, yeah. We lost the canopy that's over your front deck. Oh, yes, that's right. But you know what? It looks better. Come take a look. I think it looks a lot better. It does. It just opens it up. And we had to do that for a reason. And that's because we could not get a proper full length of East trough in there, which is really important in front of your house. If you didn't have a storm door, I would have made sure you had a storm door or a canopy over top okay. of the door. One way, one, one or, or the, the other, other, you must have. Okay. Otherwise, any rain that comes from the north will drive right into your door, and we want to stop that. I'm very happy. Hopefully, it'll be the house for me and my son that I imagined it to be from the beginning. Want to see the inside? Yes. After you. 
this whole ceiling was down. So we could do what? We could feed electrical upstairs, we could feed all the duct work, and you have new pockets. <laughs> it was always so dark there, oh my goodness. I've always wanted that. You bring in all the right people and the right things get done. I love it, <laughs> love it. Now maybe if you had a right home inspector come in here, he may have explained a few problems you had, which ended up being a lot of problems. It wasn't just simple problems. These were a lot of problems. The next time I buy a house, I will get a home inspector and go beyond what I just see, that if it looks nice, but actually go beyond, beyond that. And that's what a home inspection will uh, provide you with. Now, your kitchen is small, it's compact, it's cute. I, I have no issues with it, okay? But now when we come in to do heating, electrical, so everything was fished new from underneath for all your receptacles, your switches. You have a new pot light in the ceiling up there. Oh, yeah. You have, new, you have a new light. One thing you're really going to like about this in the winter now, you're going to be warm. warm. And you have a register at the door. <laughs> that means your Great. feet's going to be warm. You have a register wherever you're supposed to have it, under every window, at every door. Literally, you have almost a whole new heating system throughout your house. Let's go downstairs and see downstairs. You have all new ceiling, all new lighting, all new carpet. And I think Luke is going to like this. No, he's going to love it because he wants to play down here. And then, of course, it was just concrete. He's going to love this. OK, this is another area that was necessary to drop the ceiling, right? So we can make sure we run that line. Your new register, there's your double door in the back. And again, a run for all the electrical to get upstairs. Paint it up, put in new carpet, and now he's got a room to play in. Right? And it's not pink. And That's it's right. Yes. That was one of the things I actually really wanted to change the first time I came in with Mike. Yeah, it was uh, one of those pink things that I'll never forget for the rest of my life. But, you know, it's not a terrible color. It's not really the color I want. I don't think Luke wants it, and it sounds like you didn't like it. Bathroom. We had Martin come in and make sure all the plumbing was Absolutely. fine, all new electrical, fixed the plumbing under the sink, made sure it was vented properly, so that's good. Now let's go see the furnace room. If you look at your panel there, OK, the wiring was not too good. It was horizontal, this way. So they took the panel and placed it properly, which means they had to deal with the Electrical Safety Authority, which I love these people. We have a complete surge protection on your home. So as long as these lights are green, you're protected. Gary also not only, not only did all the new duct work and ran everything throughout the house, you remember that copper line yes. that came down. Yes. So that's a whole new gas line that he ran all the way through properly. And right behind you is something special as well. Central vacuum is new. <laughs> <laughs> all your pipes were just dry fitted in and just sort of squeezed in together. It was eventually going to start failing on you. They give you the best of the best, ran the whole thing throughout the house. You even have it upstairs. You have the hose attachments. You have everything. Okay. So now you can vacuum your house nice and easy. <laughs> So surprisingly, we came in for plumbing. We yeah. came in for a couple other things, and we ended up giving you all new heating, electrical. all new electrical, <laughs> all new central vac, a little bit of drywall, a little bit of love. That's right. TLC. Good? Dishwasher, pot lights, everything. Paint, no, oh, very things. good. A couple of things. Get my oh. hug. Hey, that's how I get paid. And you asked for a hug. I kind of like that. I'll she take the change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's definitely a dream come true. I, whenever I used to see Mike Holmes and the Holmes inspection, I used to think those people are so lucky to have him and his team come in. And that's all I thought about, but I never thought that it would happen to me. And I'm just so grateful that um, he's here and the whole team. I, I just cannot believe it. Luke, I'm Mike. Nice to meet you, buddy. You got an inspection book. Can you sign this book? For you? Absolutely. To my buddy, Luca. Let's eat. You hungry? If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Nice.